In this video we're going to look at velocity time graphs. Velocity time graphs have velocity at the side and time along the bottom. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a velocity time graph. This says in a race a runner accelerates at a constant rate for the first four seconds to 10 meters per second. We can assume that they're starting from rest. Starting from rest, so starting with no velocity. Um, and then they're going to go from zero up to 10 in four seconds. So that's going to put them to there. Then she's going to maintain this speed for a further eight seconds to the end of the race. So we're at four seconds, we're going for a further eight seconds. So that's going to take us to 12. Represents the velocity time graph, that's what we've just done. What we need to know about velocity time graphs, the area underneath, so area under the graph. So all this area down here, this area, the whole, the whole area, that's the distance. So distance traveled. Distance, distance, distance traveled. And the gradient, so gradient, so how steep this line is, that's the acceleration, acceleration. So there are two things we need to know about velocity time graphs. We need to know area under is distance and gradient is acceleration. So we, get, we can be asked a whole range of questions on that. Here's an example. So first question saying, find the distance traveled. So distance traveled, that means area under, area under the, the graph. So I think what's easiest to do is to split it up into triangles and rectangles. Um, it is a trapezium, we can use the area of a trapezium, um, but let's do the triangles here. So um, 4 times 10 and half it because it's a triangle, so 4 times 10 is 40, half it is 20. We've got 6 times 10 here, that's 60, and I've got well, 2 times 10 and half it, 1 times 10, that's 10. So the distance travelled in this example is 90, so 90 metres, so 90 metres. I know it's metres because velocity here is measured in metres per second, so it must be metres. Find the acceleration for the first four seconds. So acceleration, gradient. So find the gradient in the first four seconds. Uh, gradient is for every one it goes across, how much it goes up or down. So for every one it goes across, how much does it go up? Well, it goes across four and up ten. So ten divided by four, two point five. That's meters per second squared, meters acceleration, meters per second squared. Um, so every one it goes across goes up two and a half. Every one it goes across up two and a half. That's the gradient, two and a half. And it's acceleration, so meters per second squared. Find the deceleration for the last two seconds. So again, every one it goes across, how much should it go up or down in this case? Every one it goes across, it's gonna go down five. So it goes one five one five. So deceleration is five meters per second squared. Okay, we've got a different kind of example. Estimate the acceleration three seconds into the journey. So we can see there's a curvy shape here. We need to estimate the acceleration. And to do that, we have to draw a tangent. Uh, a tangent is a straight line that just touches the line, so it represents the gradient at that exact point. So after three seconds here, we need to draw a tangent. So hopefully, let's try and draw an accurate tangent at that point. Slightly hard to do with this, these thick lines. Um, I think that's fairly accurate, so there's a tangent we've drawn at that point, and then we need to look at the gradient of that tangent, so I 
and extend that should be able to see clearer so again the gradient for every one it goes across how much does it go up or down so well, it's a good point so it seems to be crossing there so it goes across Let's take another good point another good point let's, let's take this one here so the whole line's length so go it goes across one two three four five six seven so seven there and it goes up oh a six one two three four five six seven eight so for every one it goes across how much should it go up well let's do eight divide by seven and then let's leave it as eight sevenths actually so eight divided by seven oh, i put it in the wrong place so i can grab that up eight over seven meters per second squared find a deceleration for the last two seconds now it's a straight line so a lot easier for every one it goes across how much you go up or down one it goes across one two three four five so five meters per second squared okay uh pause the video give this one a go so the first question estimate the acceleration 12 seconds into the journey so let's draw a tangent a tangent 12 seconds into the journey so let's try and draw an accurate tangent that's way off try and correct that so 12 seconds into the journey that's about right so Obviously, there's going to be a range of answers for this. Um, we're not going to be able to draw, no one's going to draw exactly the same tangent, uh, but as long as we get it roughly right. So, for every one it goes across, how much do you go up or down? So, we'll find a nice point, one there, one there. So, it goes three across, down five. So, five divided by three it's well it's 1.6 recurring we'll leave it as five over three um the acceleration is actually negative so negative five over three it's going down and that's meters per second squared find the distance traveled in the first four seconds so area underneath in the first four seconds so it's a triangle so we're going to do 12 times four half or 2 times 12, so just put 2 times 12, half the base times the height. 2 times 12 is 24, that's meters distance. And the acceleration for the first four seconds. So that's the gradient again, gradient. So for every one it goes across, how much do you go up? It's 3. So the gradient is 3, so that's acceleration, meters per second squared.